My mastermind just caught a 40x return on Bonk in literally like 30 days. And the reason we were able to spot this opportunity before everyone else did was what we are going to be talking about in this video. The concept is called pattern recognition and the downloading of a pattern recognition database. Now, I'm gonna teach you exactly how in this video you can build your own pattern recognition database so that you can recognize opportunities like my mastermind has just capitalized on. So let's get into the video. This video is on pattern recognition database. This is a really important one to understand because as useful as courses are, you cannot skip the process of truly understanding what someone is saying firsthand. Words can only convey maybe 2% of what you need to understand to truly conceptualize anything that I'm saying to you. So if I say to you, you need to buy low and sell high, you understand only 2% of what I just said because there's 98% of that concept around around buying low and selling high, which you cannot learn until you have downloaded a pattern recognition database. And what is a pattern recognition database? A pattern recognition database is basically you live life and you have five senses and these five senses, they take in data from the world, you interpret the data, you find patterns in the data of what is good and bad. And then whenever you see the same things again, using the senses, your brain recognizes the pattern and it notifies you. So for example, imagine back in the caveman days, you're roaming around hunting animals with your friend and you see a lion. You've never seen a lion before. Your friend gets chased and eaten. You watch him get eaten. You run away, you survive. Now you're like, holy shit, I now know I need to stay away from lions because your five senses have interpreted the lion, what it sounds like, what it looks like, maybe what it smells like, all these different senses, right? You now know what the pattern of what you need to avoid is in the circumstance of a lion. So if you ever hear the same footstep pattern, if you ever hear roar of a lion, if you ever see the lion again, your pattern recognition database will kick in and it will notify you instantly to stay away. And in investing, it's a very similar thing. How do I know what to buy and what to sell? Well, it's just pattern recognition database. I can determine if something is a good or bad investment within 30 seconds. It does not take long because I just am using my subconscious pattern recognition database to help me make decisions. Decisions do not take a long time. When you know your shit, you can know the answer to everything almost immediately. This concept of needing to research and arm and R and sleep on a decision. No. Your brain knows what you need to do instantly. If you have downloaded a sufficient pattern recognition database and you have sufficient intuition to dictate the decision. And if you look at every single good investor in the world, they all have the ability to determine if an investment is good or bad within 30 seconds. You can put the investment, the thesis in front of an investor and in 30 seconds, they will tell you this is really good or this is absolutely terrible because they have intuition and intuition is the highest form of knowledge. It is the deepest form of knowledge that you can possibly utilize to make a decision. And I made a meme to help you understand things. I made this meme to help you conceptualize what I'm saying. So when people are deciding, say, any investment related decision, what to buy, when to buy, etc. If you copy someone, it's actually not bad if you copy someone directly. But let's say someone goes on Twitter and just copies someone on Twitter, right? That's the most retarded, low level decision making process that you can follow. You are outsourcing conviction to a stranger on the internet. You are literally a tiny little monkey brain right? That's what this level is. The next level is critical thinking. So critical thinking is using your conscious brain to analyze. It's you consciously looking at the data, taking it into your conscious brain, and then deciding what it is that you want to do. It's better than copying some dude on Twitter. It's not the best. And then the next level is deciding from instinct. So instinct is the generational wisdom that comes downloaded at birth, right? Why is it that when a fucking ant is born, it can just immediately know how to walk? Why is it that when a baby is born, it just starts crying? How does a baby know how to cry? This is instinctual things downloaded at birth. It's like the software. When you buy a new computer, it's got software pre-installed and then you add the things afterwards, right? You add all the programs after. This is the next level and you can use instinct to help determine decisions. Now, when you think about it, using instinct in investment decisions, it's actually the worst way that you could approach investing because your instincts generally run completely opposite to what you need to do in market. So for example, your instinct is to follow the herd. That's an instinct. That's not something you learn. That's something that's ingrained in you. You follow the herd. That's why everyone wants to do it. So if you implement follow the herd 
in your investing, you're just going to buy at the top and sell at the bottom. You're going to only do things when it is the consensus decision that it's a good decision, which is never when it's a correct decision. So if you decide things from instinct in investing, you're going to lose money. But the useful thing with instinct is if you do the opposite of what your instinct is, you actually end up making the right decision. So that's why it's above critical thinking. You can actually counter trade your own instinct because you can never remove instinct. You can simply understand it for what it is. And then the highest level of decision making and investing, the one that you ultimately want to get to is your intuition. So you can see my intuition told me to buy, right? Your intuition is the fastest, quickest and easiest and most accurate way to make decisions because intuition is a perpetually accumulated wisdom from lived experience which manifest in our subconscious mind. So you live your life, you make mistakes, you learn from the mistake, you remember the mistake, you've downloaded the memory and the lesson, and then you do that 10,000 times over and you actually pick up patterns. And this is what I refer to as the pattern recognition database. You live an experience like the lion, you know not to go near lions, you've now built an intuition. You now know just intuitively that when you hear the rustling of the bushes and you hear the little sound of the lion going, you know to run. The intuition tells you, holy fuck, I need to just start running. I don't know why, but I just need to run. You don't see the tiger. You don't know that the tiger or the lion is even there, but you're already being told to run away. That's because your intuition, this deep rooted accumulated wisdom is manifesting subconsciously, right? In the conscious mind, you look at something and you consciously recognize it. The subconscious mind is a process happening separate from you. The subconscious mind is ticking over without you even knowing. Your subconscious mind is a separate you. It's like a different human in your brain telling you, hey, start running, the lion's here. I know you can't see it. I can't tell you that the lion's here, but just you gotta start running. That's intuition. Now, I wanna give you a little bit of a quote here on intuition, which was from a book called The 32nd Mind. And it's a really interesting book. I haven't read it, but I read the summary and it's really interesting. It breaks down how you can basically make all the best decisions within 30 seconds. It aligns with a lot of what I've learned. So let's give this a read. That is why intuition is so useful. While you are sifting through the data, your gut feeling, as we often say, has accumulated a whole archive of undetectable signals, some positive, some negative. For deciding, the gut will then either confirm or deny the preliminary decisions of the rational self. All decisions should be considered provisional, subject to the approval of intuition. If you feel that doubt arises, examine it. It may be fear, a habitual reaction based on long-established mistakes in your self-image, or it may be the wisdom of intuition that guides you in the right direction. So I think the key point here is for deciding, the gut instinct confirms or denies the preliminary decisions of the rational self. So to put that simply, because I know you read that and didn't understand what I just said. Consciously, we go, okay, do I buy this coin or not? Consciously, okay, yes, I want to buy the coin. But subconsciously in your intuition, maybe your brain's saying, nah, I'm not sure about it. There's a level of conviction that you don't feel like you have. That is your subconscious mind not giving you the approval through intuition that you should be making this decision. And what you need to do is instead of listening to the conscious brain of objectively, I look at the data and it makes sense. Don't listen to that side. You need to listen to the intuition of this doesn't feel right. The gut feeling. Now, feeling in investing is a tough concept because the worst investors use feelings and the best of the best investors use feelings. They both use feeling, but the feeling of the beginner investor is based off of instinct and the feeling of the advanced investor is based off of intuition. Can you see the difference? A beginner investor will feel like buying at the top because instinctually they had to follow the herd. The best investors listen to the feeling of wanting to buy because they've downloaded an intuition from lived experience that they need to buy when it feels the worst to buy. That's the key difference between a good investor and a bad investor. It's listening to instinct versus listening to their intuition through lived experience, through the pattern recognition database that they have downloaded from thousands of hours of making mistakes and learning and understanding what they need to not do. So that's what it's saying here, because you need to understand that the brain is a very complicated, nuanced and complex organ. I guess you could call it an organ. I don't know, right? It's so more complex than we can possibly understand. And the way that I like to look at it is that our conscious mind is only the very tip of the iceberg. The way that the subconscious mind works is so much deeper than you could possibly comprehend. Intuition is just something that we do not understand. Maybe there's some scientific studies on it, but most humans, and I think no human truly understands how gut instinct or intuition works. It's sort of a gray area. It's very complicated, but it's something that's so important for you to use, right? Because humans, 
and pretty much all animals in general, never really had self-awareness. And from what I can understand, I'm not an expert on this stuff, but consciousness is a component of self-awareness, right? We have the ability to have conscious thinking because we are self-aware. But most living organisms do not have self-awareness and I think they don't really have conscious thoughts. They only have the instinct that they downloaded at birth, so the software, and then any of the apps that the computer has downloaded, so the subconscious lived experience of intuition, right? The animal knows that when humans jump forward, it knows that's an attack and it recognized the last time it got jumped by a human that it had to fly away or was going to get picked up and eaten, right? That's a lived experience. That's a subconscious instinct to know to fly away. But the conscious thought the animals don't have. So you can understand that like this is only a small new component of the human brain. The existing instinctual side, the intuition, and I said subconscious gut instinct, but what I really meant here is the intuition, right? The intuition, the lived experience is a much deeper component to making decisions, okay? And a lot of you guys, you ask me, and I really hate this question, Daniel, do you have like an exact process to finding the best investment? What's your step-by-step -step process? And I hate this question because it just reflects a lack of understanding of this concept of intuition. You know, the meme goes, but you must have an exact process for determining what to buy. Come on, there must be something exact that I can follow. But the truth is, just listen to your gut. That's all I do. I just listen to my gut, right? And another way of explaining it is, 99% of your research, it's just a surface level filtering process until your intuition identifies the good investment and pretty much knows that it wants to buy within 30 seconds, right? And the problem is you guys really think this part is important, right? You're always asking for step-by-step -step research processes, but it's the research component is only the surface level. If you don't have the intuition to identify the good investment, then this stuff is sort of a waste, right? Because you don't have the intuition to recognize subconsciously what is good and what is bad. So you only rely on the very surface level research in the conscious mind. It's not a very good way to research things, right? The best investors have just this intuition that the thing that they've researched is going to perform well. And they also have obviously the supporting research, but the final decision was made by the intuition. Just like in that quote that I showed you before, all decisions need to be approved by intuition. You can do all the research at the surface level that you want. I can give you the whole step-by-step -step process, but unless you have this final component of approval by intuition, then you're not going to be able to do very good investing, okay? How do you get the intuition? Well, let's go over that now. If you don't have a pattern recognition database, what do you do? Well, you have pretty much two options. You either follow the pro or you become the pro. It's pretty much all you can do. Now, follow the pro is basically find someone who's already downloaded a really good pattern recognition database who already has a gut instinct for investing and then do what they say. Now, this doesn't mean find your favorite Twitter guru and just copy their tweets. That's retarded. You need to work closely alongside the pro, okay? You have to work alongside the pro very, very closely so you can get their information as soon as they send it and so that you can get every piece of information, not just when they buy, but also when they sell when they cut the position a little bit, when they add to the position, you know, all of this. And if you want to follow the pro, as in me, the pro, then I have a mastermind community, which literally does exactly this. I tell you exactly what to do and you can pretty much just copy me, right? You don't have to go through the whole crazy process of downloading a pattern recognition database. You can just use mine. So you have use mine, pay to use it, or you build your own, spend thousands of hours to build it. So you have a choice. There's no right or wrong decision, but if you don't want to spend 3000 hours downloading your own patent recognition database, then I'm right here. But let's say you wanted to become the pro. Let's get into that. How do you become the pro? Well, patents are developed, the patent recognition database is developed, and the gut intuition. It's refined after accumulating thousands of hours of relevant life experience. So in life, you learn the most from the things you did wrong, from the mistakes you made. So the key is you want to make as many mistakes as possible with the least amount of loss per mistake. The problem with investors when they begin learning how to invest is they put in heaps of money in their first market cycle, but they don't understand that the first market cycle was never really the one where you're supposed to get rich. You're competing against people like me when it's your first market cycle, who can basically spend 30 seconds and know whether something is good or bad. Whereas you have to spend hours and hours and hours. You can't compete with that. You can't compete with me. You literally cannot beat me, right? You take too long to decide if something is good or bad. Meanwhile, I can look at it for 10 seconds and I know immediately if it's good or bad because I've already done the work to be able to make fast decisions. So what you need to do is make as many mistakes as possible. As I said, reduce the capital risk per mistake so that you can stay in the game because you have to be able to survive. If you take too much risk when you are in your high mistake prone stage, you're just going to end up losing everything because 80% of the mistakes that you can make, right? 
80% of the mistakes can only be learned through firsthand experience. You can watch this course and I can tell you what not to do, but 80% of the things I tell you not to do, you have to actually make that mistake yourself and learn it yourself. I cannot tell you don't do this on everything and you can just magically avoid it. You have to make the mistake yourself because the amount of required mistake means that without following a pro, you simply cannot put the win rate in your favor. At the beginning of your investing journey, it's near impossible to keep any profit because just the sheer amount of mistakes that you cannot avoid just makes it near impossible to not lose money. 80% of the decisions you make are going to be wrong. And so unless you can magically make so much money when you're right 20% of the time to cover the 80% where you lose, you're just going to end up losing money, which is fine because you have to pay a tuition fee to the market. We're going to talk about this in a later video. And it took me years to make money in crypto. I didn't make money till like 2019 till the start of the bull market. Even into 2020, like even 2019, I didn't do very well. I ended up making and then losing money. It was only really in 2020 where I started Started to do better. I had to invest thousands of hours to download a sufficient pattern recognition database just to minimize my mistakes to the point where I made more right moves than wrong, right? You eventually make so many mistakes that you know what not to do so that when the potential mistake comes up again, you don't make it and you eventually just avoid so many mistakes that you make more right decisions than wrong and then you end up in a profit. That's investing. Now, I really need to emphasize here that the 30 second mind, the intuition is a quantum tool with unimaginable power that is unknown by 99% of humans. The more you lean into your intuition, the more success you will have in investing, in life in general. If you listen to your intuition, the most deepest, most complex, the most advanced, the most accurate decision making process that you have, the more you lean into it, the more success that you'll have. Okay. Now, I think that is the end of this video. Let's have a look. Yep. That's the end. Now, again, I want to reemphasize you have two choices now. You either follow the pro or become the pro. All right. Follow the pro is my mastermind. I show you exactly what to do. We get you to seven figures together or you get to seven figures by becoming the pro yourself, which takes a bit longer. I chose this route, right? There's no right or wrong answer. This could be right for you. This could be right for you. Okay. So that's the end of this video. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.